As each season passes, I age a little. I think I have the answers to the questions many. Concerned with mortality and my bones brittle, next my hairline fading like my Uncle Lenny. Imagine a long white beard jut from my chin, unnerving it is to become a street poet and start to scratch my mock guitar in some refuse bin and start to scratch a bonnie tune, then blow it. But if some wacko clown dressed in hood and cloak, a sickle at hand, should say, it's time to go. First I'll insist we have a beer and a smoke. If he persists, I'll just tell him to heave ho. For while there's time to learn what things all mean, I think I'll stick around for the coming scene. Now this next sonnet may be the most, the darkest thing I've ever written. It goes right down dark to the end. The poignant image of a tortured youth glares from a mirror at a life undone, still dreaming of greatness unlike the truth, and wondering how his course this way has run. Soon seeing his eye, soon seeing his son on its way to wane, and taking off the youth he'd known with it. His eyes are stricken at the coming pain of knowing how his springtime rose has quit. But after breathing in this latter air, the youth finds out two things he should have known. The time to come, the time that went before was more than fair. The time to come will reap what he has sown. But if a harvest blight from there should stir, better to mourn those days that never were. Through reams of artifice have I plowed hard. In spite of odds and effort, I did this work. Feeling it unlock the hidden bard who yearns to scream above the precipice of an old world I felt estrangement with. One I dared disregard and stare down at as if my fire had never had need for kith. It's forced my eyes to search for what else that helped. It has been a long, pain-filled search. Not quite the kind that yields a pleasant peace, but one where truth sitting on its perch, is found to bring the world release. Nothing more dead than when the feeling's numb. In such a case, the poet is better dumb. Now this one's to, thank you, to William Blake. There is a stability in poet's hands. There is a serenity that one demands to know whereof it came. Where did this normal fire find origin? Why is it that the flame could only come from the truly sane? There is a clarity from poet's hands. There is a sagacity that one understands. Despite all the fire, power, and zealous rage, despite all the teeming on the page, there is a feeling that we have been inside this space and all of it already seen before and could not replace the truthful vision at our hands. This one is Night Haze. This is appropriate for the time of year. Nothing there is like the heated night in summer when things happen which never would otherwise. When solid days give way to teeming feasts of life. When jasmine intoxication pervades the senses with perfume when churlish crickets and speckled nightingales strut out at moonlit soirees, when soft sea breezes please the crabs which come ashore, which beachcombers sometimes eat by the light of late night bonfires, when piercing sun and heat no longer is from the sun, but sweat pours down the skin both from necessity and desire, and passionate is the air like drenched dancers at a fate, intermingling feelings of menace and delight. And creatures come with wild intent, and life storm reaches peaks not fully spent, but rising and still rising more in heat, intensity abounding as bodies meet the beat, and a lusty dance defies all calls to cease, and swells more and yet more in firm increase. Then riperous 
fills fast from the blast of summer's seed. It seems the frenzy becomes a permanent crescendo, which only lessens when the cooling sun lays down its light again. Thank you. And this is called Seven Steps from Heaven. Skyward and upward, far above away from the low deep movement of my soul, I saw at sharp surviving angles, slicing through pain with a sacred blade. Though with exquisite artfulness I hold my tenuous balletic sweep, aware that worst oblivion is just one crash away. Gliding down, buoyant on the surly waves, suspended on a truce beneath the sun, I float aside a vacant strand that should mean a home for me, but rather is the last place I'd like to land. Like old Odysseus, I must cast off and search for other lands. Though is it the voyage that is the bliss and not the destination? I've been thinking a lot of hegiras lately. Hegiras of the feet, hegiras of the mind, hegiras of the soul. Something in mankind must move, something in us must wander, seek, and sacrifice in order to find new realities that fit us better than these outworn, threadbare yesterdays. Surely I'm not alone in thinking like this. Did not the people who made this country come from elsewheres of everywhere except from where they started from? Should we not seek what is to be beyond the existing external extremity? And will not our children roam spaces both greater and smaller than we dare envision? For if there really is evolution, it must certainly be of the imagination. Somewhere beyond, apart, away, there is a kind of peace for me. No concrete streets or miasmas of vanities will sway my staggered, soulful heart. No corporate suspenders, dreams of world subjugation, nor even streaming, steaming, processed pussy from a gleaming cup will slake my final determination to find the meaning buried within. It is not a wounded or lost child I seek, but a joyous spirited boy who feared nothing, loved everyone, and only sought to help others without regard for anything but the need to do the right thing. This is a cliche for many, but a guiding compass for him, for me, and for those who care. Peace and love I seek, for life is everywhere. More life here there cannot be, so much so that nihilism is merely a natural reaction instead of a helpful alternative. There is a beauty in destruction, but there is a special pain in its aftermath, and hell is only a footfall away. Is that the conclusive answer? Is hell the way to heaven, the way to solid eternal bliss? That is not a Buddhist answer, but respectful though I am, I believe in facing the shadows. Rather than escape the suffering, let the suffering purify and we will be changed for higher good. Thank you, thank you for coming. Peace, peace to you all who seek the truth and left it, nothing less should you accept than heaven. All right, let me, let me uh, finish with this, thank you guys, this last thing which is uh, from the play that you may see, uh, trying to get out there, it's called Charles XII of Sweden, this is the final speech. So now the time has rendered all to this, as men go out to plant with all their hopes placed in the earth. As lilies bloom within the tides of spring, it shall instead become a bitter spring. Sadness walks in all shades as faded day, amid the singing birds of paradise. Confused is the nature of things today. The heavens shake, and yet the sun still shines. For Charles, my Charles, our nation's late dear Charles, is now no more, but memory in the soul. A pain upon the chest, so heavy now, it knows not how to stand but groan. Oh God, he was the eternal symbol of youth, a fighter for the vanished cause, long since destroyed when Europe's kings conspired its end. When is the lion safe from packs of jackals? When is the eagle from a flock of kites? The great are always weak when stalked by those that by themselves demand only pity and would not scare the gentlest fly that weaves along a lake in summer's yesterdays. But when united are fatally formed 
and take a cruel and sweeping punishment like vengeance, yet somehow more natural. They have their sacrifice. They have earned it. Oh, Charles, we know you are no more with us. Fire and glory is what you wish to have, and it will serve your fearsome elegy. But now's our time to bring the region peace. We must negotiate and surge ahead to some distinction in this otherwise uncertain time where glory now is dead and honor is worthless to the eyes of men. I know, my brother, how this touches you. This was not as it was supposed to pass, but happened it has and I don't ask why. All I know is we must set to the new and give new hope for our nation's children, these soldiers' families, these sons of war who suffered these past years but not in vain. We must resolve to give a breath of peace, to care for all affected citizens, and usher Sweden towards a different age of freedom and prosperity for all. Let us fulfill the duty we have got. It is our time, friends. Destiny has come. Impatient for a response, we must get on and ride our steeds into the setting sun. I offer you the new. Forget the old. In this, another chance. We must be bold. Thank you, everybody.